Hello everyone and welcome to another game of World of Warships. Today's replay is from Salty Plat and he's in Montana, a tier 10 US battleship. He's on the Boris path and well this is a ranked battle, so arms race. There is, well obviously this is Smolensk, not too many Russians around. Interesting enough, there is no carrier and there is only one destroyer per team. Now the friendly daring seems to be already taking a beating, which is, well, not very good. Well done, Commander. It's possibly that the enemy Minotaur is... Wait, did I have an... Oh, they have a booster too. So, maybe he got boosted, maybe he got Minotaur. Maybe he did Minotaur smoke. I mean, there's some smoke over there, but was that the Minotaur or was he smoked by a destroyer or something? Anyway. So, our, Minot uh, our Montana here has decided to... Go towards this flank. I mean, it's nice to spread out your forces a little bit. You want to get more buffs. And obviously you want to create crossfires. And that's basically what he's doing here. He's on his way to hopefully get flanking shots into the enemy forces. So the friendly forces there should uh, probably not be too aggressive, I guess. The Yamato seems to be a little bit weird positioned with that island. So I'd like him to... Uh, should really go around this island, I think, and then go nosing towards him or something. Data. We will see. Now, the yeah, the enemy has a Kremlin here who had the same idea, like, uh, here on this flank and the crossfires. But the enemy Kremlin is alone, and our Montana brought a sidekick. And this hidden book is going to be a very valuable sidekick in this match, let me tell you. And there you can already see the advantage of that positioning, that Wooster might be in cover from the forces in the north, but, you know, doesn't help against our Montana here. And again, it's not like the Montana actually scored any decent hits so far, because, you know, RNG always has a say in this too, doesn't it? Good show. Meanwhile, the friendlies have just lost two of the ships. That's a bit problematic. But if they can, like, ambush that Kremlin here, then maybe they can at least somehow come back. Inburg comes around. That's going to be a top run. Problem is, of course, the Kremlin might just do a lot of harm to the Hindenburg in the process. But the Kremlin is also pretty broadside-ish now. It was six citadels. And I guess in, uh, the Hindenburg gets the remainder of the Kremlin. So at least that worked. And the friendlies just lost another ship. So that's a bit unfortunate. The friendly team should have probably been slightly more passive there on this flank, waited for our Flanking force to get in a better position. Found the broadsides. But this game is far from over now. Of course, the having, uh, well, being two ships behind is not a very nice position to be in. But there is a Minotaur here. We all know Minotaurs are floating citadels. Maybe, just maybe, he can actually score a nice hit here. Or maybe not. Or maybe just not. So, there was a gearing somewhere in this area. The gearing might still be around. Hindenburg, I assume the Hindenburg carries Hydro. Have you ever seen the Hindenburg use Hydro? I haven't paid attention, I suppose. Considering how bad defensive fire is these days, I would definitely bring Hydro on a Hindenburg. So, uh... And he's a three ships behind, but there is a Smolensk. Smolensk is slowing down, he's trying to smoke his completely broadside. And um, what does RNG say? RNG says, say if yes. Oh, uh, hello, here. So the Smolensk gone, that's um, obviously a moral victory at least. And um, now we have the gearing, that gearing screwed up because he got detected here, it looks like. And. He doesn't really have much of an escape route because the island is blocking his sailing away. So, by here. We've sunk an enemy destroyer. 
Okay, so it's uh, four against three now. Yamato still reasonably healthy, I suppose. Let's see, they can almost claim the buff that they are in here. They don't have a heal buff though. Actually, the friendlies don't have a lot of buffs at all. A heal buff would have been rather nice probably for that Yamato to help her survive there. So, at least I grabbed another thingy. And that core first seems to be going down. I'm not sure why he isn't shooting the core first yet, to be honest. Torpedoes astern. I mean, letting that core first survive is not a very good long-term strategy, to be honest. I mean, it's though baitable if he could have. But I would have tried. So. There are some more troops incoming. They are raided by the rooster. It's two against four right now. And damage con is almost ready again. As I said, like they don't have a heal and there isn't a heal on the map right now. That's a bit of a shame because it uh, probably be rather helpful to recover some hit points. Oh, there is the mid. That's that's uh, <laughs> problem solved, sir. That Minotaur is screwed up. Come on. Hey, go. That's what we wanted to see. So I'm not sure why he thought coming around this island fully broadside in front of the two enemies without any support was the way to go. But you know, it's certainly helpful because now it's only a two versus three. Not the ideal Back. situation, I guess, but it could be worse. And the Hindenburg so far has proven to be a very good sidekick. And it looks like he also might be able to dodge those torps. Good Hindenburg. Spotter airborne. Now the Hindenburg is going to stay here inside the cap. And he is going to flush out the Dwooster. So if the Dwooster wants to run away, he's going to run into the Hindenburg guns. And if the booster doesn't want to run away, then he, well, has to face a Montana point-blank range. And that's not gonna to... It's not going to go in his favor, most likely. Now, the enemy battleships are still on the way back and currently not in a position to help the booster. The booster is prepared here with armor piercing, but it's... Yeah, it's... Quite a few overpens here, the rooster is lucky to be still floating. But even like even if the Montana is not very well angled, the rooster just can't EPM him down fast enough. Also, like the rooster tried to go around here, the Hindenburg was waiting, and the Hindenburg takes the kill. So far I have to say the Montana Hindenburg team they yeah, they've performed pretty well together there. Huh? Now, what, what's left is two enemy battleships, and they will now have to sink those. Not sure how health... Like, this core first was on very low health earlier. But he had time for a heal or two, and the enemy might have grabbed, uh, grabbed the heal buff. So, you know, I'm is not in the friendly's favor in that case. Because those two enemies are going to heal up, and the friendlies... Well, no heal buff, and none on the map. And there is the crew first. Yeah, the crew first just recovered quite a bit of hit points there. And he's still recovering. But he's also broadside. And that means the Montana can get some very... No oh. That crew first is almost there. If he could sink the crew first and then ram the... The problem is he, like... <laughs> goes around like this, he's showing too much broadside to the Kufus, so he has to slow down and wait until the Kufus goes behind the island, so... But the Kufus is healing too much there. But perfect timing, he waited until the Kufus couldn't shoot anymore, now he's coming around and he's going for the ram. It's the best he can do in his position here, I think. And... Great success. Now it's... It's up to our Hindenburg sidekick. Come on, Hindenburg. Be the best sidekick ever. Sink yourself a cool first and claim the victory. The 
Mildly hurt a bit there, but I'm guessing he's loaded. Goofy is this broadside. Come on, juicy pens. Are we going to see Torps? Best sidekick ever. Well, here we are with the results, and Salty Plap earned himself 3,401 base experience. And well, he did very well, and so did his sidekick, the Hindenburg. So, nicely done. Give two devastating strikes a confederate in the high caliber scoring 305,000 points of damage. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I'll see you guys next time.